programme that we found in 1990 was useless. This, your attitude doesn't really surprise me, you know, you're obviously well behind all the states and then I hung up. So, <laughs> fol the following day the police rang me and said, you've been stirring things up. I said, good. But, but, all they did was get a policewoman out of the office. This isn't going to Brisbane, is it? <laughs> they got a, a well-meaning policewoman out of the office with no education background, no child protection background, no research background, to amend their original program, which I was saying they needed to discard and start again. You know, we've done it in South Australia. It's all the hard work's been done, but there is still resistance to that word penis. Self-defense is valuable for children with learning disabilities uh, because it increases confidence and um, that itself is helpful. An American New Zealand program called Kit Power taught girls in special ed to kick men between the balls and poke their eyes when they, when they, when they were attacked. And they loved it. <laughs> they practiced with a very well-padded man. <laughs> However, afterwards, and they'd had, they had lots of practice of doing this, by the way. I mean, they'd never had such power before, had they? Afterwards, they told me they would only dare use it if attacked by a stranger, and all their abusers had been people they knew, so they weren't ever likely to use it. And they didn't involve boys, because the boys were already thought to be too aggressive. However, a useful aspect of that Kit Power program was giving children opportunities to practice resisting persuasion and also what we call, um, uh, oh, what's that expression they've got? Where you keep on keeping on. If somebody doesn't believe you the first time and doesn't help you, persistence expectation, uh, that is also a good thing to teach. Um, asking, well, if that didn't work, what, would, what could you do next? We found that kids who've been in a, in a child protection program would offer five suggestions of alternative things they could do, whereas children who hadn't had the programme would offer one suggestion and you say, well, if that didn't work, what could you do? They didn't know. So persistence um, is a very useful thing to have. Also observation. Powers of observation are very useful. When I was mugged in um, Rome, I was the only one in a long queue who checked the number of the vehicle. And I, I get really cross when I hear of parents seeing folks trying to um, abduct children outside schools. And nobody ever takes the vehicle number. New Zealand teaches kids to, to spot um, vehicle numbers and vehicle descriptions. And they do it as, as a game. And we, do, we did it as maths. You know, how many, how many uh, uh, Toyotas there were in the school playground and, and, and looked at numbers. And spotting numbers when you're driving around. Because you, you, can, you can stop somebody in their tracks by um, getting the number and reporting it. And we found that although quite a few children in New Zealand had been pestered um, by older kids, usually older youths with beer cans in their hands, uh, trying to get them to go in the car with them, uh, most had been able to remember some part of the vehicle number, which is a great help. Yeah. Children may not tell you directly that they've been abused because they're unlikely to have the language, they're unlikely to know that it was wrong and reportable, and they give hints. And these are some of them. He wears funny underpants. Ask, where do you see them? What's he doing when you do see them? I don't want to go to Granddad's house or Uncle's house anymore. Usually, the parent will say, well, you know, you've got to go because I've got to go to work or I've got to go shopping or this or that. They don't ask why. Um, somebody's mean, it's usually the babysitter. And we found that about 10% of kids had already been sexually abused by babysitters in New Zealand. And uh, these were teenagers, of course. And uh, they often describe the behavior as mean or gross. I don't like the games he plays. Find out how he plays them. Uh, he, he does funny things, or he, he says silly things sometimes. Find out what he does. I don't like the way he teases me. Now, what usually happens is mums will say, we've all got to learn to put up with teasing. They don't bother to find out. 
I don't like his milk or ice cream, but of course it means semen. It's yucky. Where does it come from? I have a secret. Don't say you've got to keep a secret. You must tell a secret if it's not a happy one. Oh, I don't want to go to Grandad's today. Why? Uh, yesterday I spent the morning with three children we know have been abused, but nothing's happened about it. And one of them was writing when I got there, and he said, I don't want to live at Dad's house anymore. I want to live with my mum. I don't like Dad's house. And I just said, oh, you know, why don't you like Dad's house? And he put his pencil down and ran and hid in the bushes in the garden for the next half hour. So you may not always get an answer. If children have been threatened, you may not get an answer, but it's worth a try. Signs associated with abuse. Stays on underwear or garments are missing, underwear is missing. Redness confined to anus or vaginal only. Um, it isn't nappy rash. Nappy rash is usually widespread. This is focused <coughs> on the on the uh, on the openings. <clears throat> Love bites or bruises in unusual places. Bruises where they've been held down. Bruises between the thighs where you wouldn't normally get bruises <coughs> if you if you fall. Difficulty walking after rain, the boys t told me that they found it very difficult to walk home um, and they were bleeding of course, uh, hid their messy underpants because they didn't want them to know because they'd been threatened that terrible things would happen if they told. Difficulty swallowing when they've been used for oral sex, sometimes can get infections. Children expose sex knowledge beyond their years and uh, very often with younger ones they return to wetting, bed wetting and soiling, have nightmares, night fears, show fear of the abuser um, and cling to save people. Deliberate or accidental disclosures, for example when a teacher reprimanded a boy for seeking oral sex instead of asking who told you how to play that game, who showed you how to play that game, uh, because they, you need to treat it as a game, otherwise they will realise that something's wrong and panic and close down. Um, this teacher asked, uh, or told, told the child off, and the child replied, well, Dad does it to me. So that was, that was a disclosure that was accidental. But when they've got an unhealthy or obsessive sexual interest, usually shown in school or at home uh, with, with other siblings, especially younger ones. Sexually explicit drawings, which I'll show you, reenacting abuse with others, pets or dolls, obsessive masturbation, uh, promiscuous behavior with same sex as abuser, uh, girls who've been sexually abused by men can behave very sexually with male teachers, and self-destructive <coughs> behaviors, um, cutting themselves and uh, <coughs> trying to kill themselves or succeeding. And of course you can count drugs as self-destructive as well. So what's the difference between uh, sexual behaviour that's healthy and not healthy? As I said, show me yours, show you mine, equal sharing between friends, looking rather than touching, and usually uh, same age, not an older one trying to do it to a younger one. Not obsessive, easily distracted, um, Accompanied by giggling and silliness, playing at doctors and nurses, mummies and daddies, all normal, embarrassed when caught and easily distracted. What leads to problem sexual behaviour is usually that they've experienced sex abuse. More than 50% of children who are exhibiting uh, problematic sexual behaviours have been abused and are reenacting what they've learned. Witnessing disturbing adult sex. Uh, when you've got some mothers around who have multiple partners and on drugs, the kids see everything. Living in sexually violent homes, witnessing excessive disturbing porn. I'm sorry to tell you that we found that boys told us that their dads um, showed them porn on um, internet, bragging that this is what real men enjoy, uh, which is a form of child abuse. Living in a dysfunctional family uh, where um, 
sex is just part of the scene, seeing prostitution for money or drugs, and when it's just part of other violent criminal behaviour. So ask questions when the child shows an obsessive interest in sex. You know, who, who do you play these games with? Um, keep it low key. Where have you, where have you, you know, played this before? Uh, seeks or offers oral sex. Who showed you how to play the game? Inserts fingers, objects, or penis into genitals. Simulates sexual intercourse. Bullies others into doing sex things. Uses coercion, tricks, bribes, blackmail, or chooses younger and more vulnerable victims. Imposes secrecy and or threats. What will happen if you tell? Who else knows the secret? We do not ask um, what the secret is, because they've been told that terrible things will happen. You ask who else knows it and what will happen if you tell. Because if you ask what will happen if you tell, you'll find out what the threat was and uses adult porn language such as golden showers. I was asked to um, talk to staff at a school where they often pick kids on the first day of school because they're the most vulnerable. And this little girl had been caught in the toilet by boys who urinated on her and were calling it golden showers, which meant that somebody in that group had seen pornography. And all the hand was, uh, the boys got black stars on their staff charts and were kept in from recess at a, for a week. But you see, the teachers haven't been trained. And they're still not trained in many areas. Young children are likely to be re-enacting their own abuse when there's an imbalance of power and for sex. They use force, violence, threats that bad things will happen, just like grown-ups do. Tricks to get the victim alone. Blackmail, bribes, younger, smaller, or disabled, vulnerable children. Bullying. Adult or poor language bullying to make others abuse whilst they watch, and of course the others get into trouble, and the perp, the one who instigated it, gets away with it. Angry denial when caught, and uses demands or offers oral sex. This is happening so frequently now that um, health workers in uh, Queensland say they regard it as normal behaviour, which is frightening because there's nothing in it for the kids who are providing the oral sex, but they found it. In even here, on, on, under desks, in classrooms where the teachers are out, it's mind blowing. Now, drawings. Victims may express themselves through drawings when they can't verbalise sexual abuse. And I've found drawings are useful for um, asking questions, really. When they are showing an obsession with sex or genitals in their pictures, when they use angry colours, use when there is free choice. Bother, I was going to bring some big pictures to show you the colours. Uh, I'll be aware of that. Armless or faceless self portraits when they draw arms and faces on other people. Armless because children regard their armless arms as the, the power, and armless when they're feeling helpless. Faceless when they've got a, a secret that they can't tell, or mouthless. And we find that their body images deteriorate. They've been, been drawing body images on other people that are perfectly normal, but their own body image is uh, immature. We found very often they put insidious grins on offenders' faces. Now, this is really interesting because we're talking about drawings done by six and seven year olds. Sad expressions on self portraits. Bizarre, immature drawings when you know kids are eight and they're drawing like four-year-olds. Another one to watch for: oval mouths with sharp, exaggerated teeth when they've had to provide oral sex, and use of phallic symbols. In other words, they're drawing trees that look like penises. Uh, An explicit, explicit sexual drawings. This was a boy aged ten. The teacher asked me to go and look at him, as they put it because he was behaving very sexually. 